Hey beautiful soul and welcome to today's video in which we're going to take a look at how you can automate your onboarding process. So if you're a coach or an agency owner or basically any type of service provider that needs to take their clients through the same onboarding uh, every single time, this is the video for you. So let's get started. Hi and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yoko de Swift. I run a creative agency called Unbound Creative Agency where we help entrepreneurs build lead generating personal brands and last year alone I was responsible for generating over 200 million in sales all through organic content so today we're gonna take a look at how you can automate your onboarding process as a service provider so whether that's coaching or agency services and we're gonna take a look at how you can do that for yourself and I'm also gonna show you the example of our onboarding process as well towards the end of the video so make sure that you stick it out until the end if you want to see how we've automated our onboarding process and it's almost all digital at this point there's very little human interaction during our onboarding process so the reason that you want to take a look at automating your onboarding process is to save yourself a bunch of time to allow your client to do it when they have time for it so there's no scheduling involved and then also just to avoid human error the more tasks that are handled by humans in your organizations the more uh, room for error there is and by automating your process you can eliminate a bunch of that human error so the first step to automating any type of process within your business is to actually take a look at what the different steps of that process are so if you are let's say uh, an agency owner and you deliver ad services for your clients this is where you're going to take a look at okay when i normally have an onboarding call with this person Person or when I normally send them or onboarding documentation, what are the different steps that we are taking? What are the different steps that we're discussing? Do I need access to their ads account, to their Google Drive? Do I need to to add them to a Slack channel, et cetera. You have to write down all these different steps before you can then go on to the second part of the process, which is taking a look at how can we automate a bunch of that stuff. So this works particularly well if you have a scalable service. With that, I mean, um, if you have a, a core offer that is scalable and that you can replicate over and over that requires very little customization per client so if you're only doing custom projects there will still be parts of your onboarding that you can automate but it will still require some custom work from you as well to onboard that client whereas if you have a core offer that is the same for all of your clients you can automate let's say 95 percent of your onboarding process which is what we've done so the service in in my agency that we can easily scale is our youtube services so this is where we work with entrepreneurs realtors coaches to position them as experts on youtube i won't go into the details of the exact service but there are specific steps to that need to be followed to to onboard a client for that service it's the same for every single client and a hundred percent of that service can be fulfilled by my team so the only step that i am still responsible for is the sales call and once i have sold someone on the service and they've signed their contract and paid their invoice they are sent to our onboarding flow and from that point forward my team handles every single aspect of the service delivery and if you have a service like that especially in advertising it's very easy to do you can automate your entire onboarding flow and you can also automate or outsource your entire service delivery so the flow that we've built is a video flow with multiple steps explaining each step along the way we've built this in Kartra which is the sort of sauce product that we use to create all our landing pages our email lists our opt-in forms etc and then we also have an onboarding form in Rike, which is our project management tool that we use in the back end of the agency. And so as soon as the client fills out that form and submits it, a bunch of tasks will be triggered for my team to then start delivering the service and to start onboarding 
that client. But let's just take a look at the different steps that we have in our onboarding flow and that maybe that will help you come up with the steps that you need as well in your flow. So let me just jump on my laptop and show you what our onboarding flow looks like. All right, so I'm now on our onboarding step one. We've built this page in Kartra and we've opted to use videos in our onboarding process. To me, it feels more personal and also it's easier to explain a lot of information in a short video than it would be to write all of that out on the page. So our first step is basically a step that explains what they can expect from onboarding. It explains to them in the video and also down below that the onboarding process will take roughly 90 minutes. Please leave adequate time for this most efficient marketing onboarding process you'll ever come across. And in the video itself, I sort of tell them like don't you hate it when you sign on for an agency and it takes two three weeks of emailing back and forth before you can get started we sort of eliminated that hassle and condensed our onboarding process in a 90 minute flow take your time to just complete this in one sitting and then we can get you started so that is our first step and then there's a button down below that says take me to the next step so let's click on that then, and this is something that I really do advise you add to your onboarding process. It's sort of a what to expect from your program, what to expect from your services. The reason that we have a what to expect from the six months is because we sell our agency services as a six month program for new clients. And then afterwards it turns into a monthly retainer. We do this because we're working with organic content. We don't see results as quickly as an advertising agency, for example, but the results that we do see after six to 12 months are lasting results for years to come. So that's sort of the difference. And that's why our minimum retainer, our minimum program is six months because we don't wanna work with people only for two months and then having those people get frustrated because they're not seeing instant results and then quitting um, that would be a shame both of our time and of the money invested by the client so we have a six month minimum and in step two of our onboarding process we take them through what they can accept expect from the services, what is included, what is not included. Also, we have a part in there of the emotional journey of this process. Again, working with organic content. Sometimes we have people in month two or three that get very discouraged because they're not seeing an instant increase in leads. So that's also something that we take them through in the onboarding process. We take them through how we like to communicate with our clients and how we like to be spoken to as a team. We take them through do's and don'ts of working with us. And we also very specifically set boundaries on what we will accept and what we will not accept in the program and how to make it a great partnership and how to make sure that the partnership gets discontinued. We include all of that in there so that later on um, those expectations are set and there is no sort of room for argument on what is accepted and what is not. That's just a, a video. I think it's like a 20 minute video and then they can go to the next step. So let's go and take a look at that. Step number three is sign the contract. Now, the way that we had it set up before was that we had a template in DocuSign. There was a link in here and then people would be able to go and click that and simply sign the template. We found that sometimes people skip this step and then we had an issue later on. So now what we do is on the sales call, I will send out the contract in DocuSign. This is simply a step to remind them to sign their contract. It tells them like, hey, you've received an email with your contract. Make sure that you sign the contract. And then once you have signed it, you can move on to the next step. And then the person on our team that handles the onboarding calls, he will check on the onboarding call whether or not the contract has been signed and if not he will wait on the call for them to go and sign the contract very important to have your clients sign their contracts if you skip this step you might get in trouble later on step number four for us 
is time for YouTube integration. So if you run an ads agency, this would be where, for example, you put a video explaining how they can give you access to their ads manager. This for us is a video explaining how they can give us access to their YouTube channel. So that's just a short video on that. And then it explains it down below as well. It says in order for us to be able to optimize your YouTube channel and upload your videos for you, we need access to your YouTube channel. And then we give them the email address that they need to use to give us access to that channel. And then sometimes we have people that are really starting from scratch and they don't even have a YouTube channel set up yet. It's not something that we can do for them because their YouTube channel will be tied to their Gmail account or their Google account. So then we just have a little note in there. If you don't have a YouTube channel yet, click here or watch this video um, to see how you can set up your own channel and then give us access to it using the video above. Then we take them to the next step. This is tell us more about yourself, your market and your audience. And this is where we integrate our Kartra onboarding flow with Rike, our project management tool. So this is again me sort of, you can see the hands, that's how I talk, uh, explaining why we need more information. So the way that our service works is that we help our clients create content that is based on marketing data. So we go in using the tools that we have and we take a look at what is your ideal client looking for online? What answers or what questions do they have? What questions are they actively typing into the YouTube search box? What keywords so they're searching for and then based on that we will create uh, a list of titles and topics that our clients will create titles about now we can't do that unless we have all the information about their ideal client their market um, what their goals are who they're trying to attract etc especially if we're working with realtors in the US I'm not from the US my team is not from the US we know very little about the the local areas where these people are active so we ask them just write down every single neighborhood that you're active in and then based on that we can start our research now in order to do that we've created an onboarding form in our project management tool called Rike. so in the video I explained to them we need more info about you in, in your market and then below the video it says fill out your onboarding form here and when they click on that they're taken to Rike. And it basically asked them, hey, what's your phone number? We ask this just, normally we don't communicate via phone, but we ask this just in case there's a really urgent matter that we can call them. Then we ask them, what market are you active in? And it explains to them what we actually need to know. Do you already have a YouTube channel? If so, please provide us with the URL. Do you have a website? Please provide the links to your brand social media channels. Do you have a logo or brand guidelines that you want us to use? Then we ask them for the URL to that brand guideline or logo, color, colors, fonts. It basically goes on with all these questions that we need them to fill out so that we can do our jobs. And then once they click next, I believe there's one more page asking them some personal information and they can submit the form and that form will trigger a project in our project management tool that will alert our graphic designer, our project manager, our account manager, our video editor that will be linked to this client to sort of start working on onboarding this client. And then afterwards, once they filled that out, they can go to the next step. And then it says, book your strategy session. And it's a video of me explaining what will be discussed on that strategy session, but I don't, or I no longer handle the strategy sessions. So in this step, they can book their strategy session. Now I used to handle these strategy sessions as well, but that is now someone uh, on my team who handles the day-to-day -day operations of the agency. He's also our account and client manager. So they can book their call below. So book your strategy call here. And this is his calendar or his Calendly that is integrated on that page where they can then simply click and then select a time that works for them. And Calendly will automatically convert that to their local time zone. So my account manager is in the Philippines and he has set up this calendar using his uh, available times and his time zone and then Calendly will automatically convert that, which comes in very handy because I'm in Europe, my clients are in the US, our account manager is in the Philippines. You need a tool like this to, to make scheduling 
easy. And then once they've scheduled that, they will receive an email and they will receive reminders as well for their strategy session. And then it says, take me through the next step. And then it's simply like some final words. It's me saying, hey, welcome to the agency. We look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, please let us know. Also, I think it's either in this video or in the video that explains what you can expect from our collaboration. I include where we will communicate. So I will tell them like, once you fill out your onboarding form, you will also receive an invite to Rike and you will receive an invite to Slack. And I explain to them that all our communication will happen in Slack to avoid any lost communication on email. I also inform them that if they do send emails, unless it's really something payment related, it will be disregarded. So all communication regarding the actual service needs to happen in Slack so that the entire team can jump on that and, and, and can work on that. And that's basically our onboarding process. And then everything else happens in the back end in Rike and is handled by the team, which makes it possible for me to really just focus on growing my business, developing the business, and then I handle the sales calls as well. But then once someone is sold, I hand them off to the team who does the service fulfillment. And I have communication with my account manager on Slack almost every day, just touching base and then probably get call with him every week or two weeks to sort of check in on the clients that we have. Are there any issues that we need to take a look at? Is there anything that we need to train the team on to deliver a better service? But I no longer handle the day-to-day -day operations of the service fulfillment, which is if you want to scale your business, how that's how it should be. You should not be in the trenches doing the day-to-day, -day, posting the social media stuff, posting the ads. That should not be your job. It should be your job to optimize your service delivery, to optimize your onboarding process, and to sell more services so that your business can grow, that your revenue can so again, write down all the steps that you're currently taking in your onboarding process that you're doing manually, and then take a look at how you could create a flow like this using videos, using different steps to guide your clients through that without you having to actually be present in that process. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get updates on future videos. Also, let me know in the comments down below what other topics you want me to cover. I'm really just showing you how I run my business uh, so that hopefully you can run your business uh, without making the same errors that I did. And yeah, just let me know what other things that you would want me to cover or to show you how we do it at the agency. And then I will be happy to create those videos as well. In the meantime, make sure that you check out these videos over here and then I wish you an incredible rest of your week and I will see you next time.